Okay. All right. Hold on. All right. All right. So we are gonna do this. So basically, anytime you're doing trompoy and they don't give you, they will tell you where. You always have to ask where's your light source. Um, where's the light coming from? If they do not have an answer, your light is always coming from this angle. Always assume the light is coming from this angle. And that's important because it tells you where your highlights and your shadows are coming from. And uh, you want to get your circle first. You want to get your basic shapes down before you start any of your fun stuff. So you've got to be able to build your shapes. When I was first doing trompe l'oeil, they made me do all the circles by hand because I had to learn how to draw circles by hand. I will not do that to you because the people at CalArts were psychotic. Um, but uh, so normally you would have a compass or other accoutrement. I tend to use what's on hand because it's faster. Sometimes it's a, a, a screw with a little piece of string is really, really amazing. Oftentimes you just find a bucket that is close. I would suggest finding a bigger bucket. This will do. I also say close enough, good enough for hand grenades, horseshoes, and the federal government. I learned that while working for the federal government. Um, <clears throat> so this is just rough, you know. Yeah, you, she was going to go quick. You might take the, your time. This is just quick demonstration. Please take your time. Please make this look nice. Again, this will just be the rough under outline. You will be doing this with charcoal. I'm going to go lighter than I'm going. You want to make sure that you get this in the center. So that's a bit better. So you see how lighter that is. And then you want to kind of get your rough shapes in. So. So I'm only going to draw a little bit in. And I'd spend a little bit better, longer time making sure that I had the correct shape. This is why I use pencil, because I'm a little more comfortable with pencil. If you're more comfortable with pencil, you could start out with pencil. And then erase your guidelines. I do that a lot. But you're going to want to knock your basic shape out and always like pay attention to ack. They will come after you and be like, this is too a centimeter off and make you redo the whole thing, especially like Disney. Like I've done a lot of work for Disney and they'll come in and they'll tell you, this is brilliant. It's uh, three centimeters to the left. Redo it. You have to redo an entire wall. Ah, and it's annoying. Do you get paid by the hour for that? Or you that do get paid sense? by the hour, but um, you're also on a timeline. So, um, you know, because the ride has to open at a certain date and sometimes they change the date on you because I worked for Galaxy's, I did Galaxy's Edge. So um, we were supposed to open sometime, we were told the end of summer and then I was at home uh, eating snacks and scrolling mindlessly on Twitter and then all of a sudden I saw a huge announcement saying we will be opening May 18th and I was like this is news to me. I go to work the next day and it is absolute pandemonium. And I go to my boss, John, and I'm like, what is going on? Did you know that we were opening May 18th? And John was like, no one knew. That was something the executive board dropped on everyone. Mm. So it was a uh, pants on head, flight of the bumblebee, mad scramble to get that done because they made that announcement in... I think it was January 20th when that happened. So we, instead of having eight months, we suddenly had four. 
So they made the announcement and didn't think to tell any of the people working on it? Welcome to the corporate world. That happens. Actually, that's not uncommon. I mean, one of my first big gigs I ever had was for the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. And we were building the GM UAW pavilion. And we'd be going off drawings and some vice president would walk in. Everything would be changing. A bigger vice president would walk in. They'd be changing back. Yep. A big, we call it big footing. So whenever like a bigger person comes in and big foots it, when I used to design a lot of trade shows, all the time that would happen. Never design it like in the, you don't, but never design a trade show like on a fee basis. It's got to be fee plus because like yeah, there'll be like a different group. Oh, we got rid of that group. It's a different, you know, strategic marketing worldwide is now going to be the thing. And so then they change a whole other concept. My personal favorite is you're a, a painter and they'll walk up to you and they'll be like, uh, can you paint it as this, 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 and this? And you have to know enough to go, that's a change order. You're going to have to talk to my boss about that. Yeah, that is a big one. Okay. So, I would say this, always, always go with the chain of command. Yeah, always, always follow your chain of command, especially if you're the low man on the totem pole, pass it up because you cannot get in trouble. Okay, so I've got the basic guidelines in. Again, I went a little dark here, so don't do that. That is that is my you, Hercules is heel. Is there a specific hardness or softness pencil that you would recommend? I'd go softer. Okay. You remember how it works on pencils? H is hard, B is soft. So like a 6H is like a nail. Well, 6B is like butter. Okay. Yeah. So, but the great thing about pencil is you can erase it. My mentor who taught me how to paint was really great. It wasn't Mary Heilman. It was this guy named Miguel. And uh, he said, the great thing about paint is you can never truly fuck it up. You can always paint over it. <sighs> Unless it's a China silk drop. In that case, you're just getting in your car and driving to Mexico. Yeah, it, 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 a translucency. You, 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 They're birds now. They're all birds. It, it's, hmm. it's sort of the same when you're, uh, you're painting where you do all the highlights and then you use glazes. Like the glazes. Sailing a floor is my, uh, I hate it, with the fire of a thousand suns. Okay, so I'm going to do this area up here. But if you can see, there's your shadow. So I've mapped out that area, that area. So you can just start your charcoal. We should have asked for a resource too because I love them. I make so many mistakes. The great thing about being good at my job is you can't tell when I'm dead. That is the true. Uh, someone's, again, it's like someone said, All right, if you're a master, how come you make so many mistakes? And I said, The true mark of a master is not the fact that you make mistakes, it's the fact that no one can tell when you're done. It's not the process, it's the goal. So here we can see that there's a bounce shadow in here, so it's not going to be the same value. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. And what we're going to do is, this is magic. Um, But you see how it already creates that sort of round, you know, extra shape a little bit. Especially when you're working with charcoal, like your eraser is also your, your best bud. I really should have asked for, for erasers. That was my bad. I'm a ding dong. But if you've got an elevation, like, you will never get, uh, sometimes your elevation will be on a post-it note, or you're just going to be told to make it up as you go along. But um, <clears throat> when you get a really good elevation like this, pay attention to its values, its highlights, and its shadow, because you will always be asked to replicate it exactly as it's printed. You cannot go off into the wild blue yonder, you cannot suddenly decide, 
I like the color blue, so I'm going to make this yellow thing blue. I had a coworker that used to do that. We called it getting Alland. <laughs> um, so he sometimes he would we would have um, a set piece. This was for we. I worked for the shop called Nassau, which is a shop here in town. That is a great place to work. Um, and uh, he would corporate. So the theme park would take this sample. So you, you guys know what samples are, right? Mm -hmm. We take the sample and we would get Nintendo. Okay. We would get, um, and we can break this into little pieces. We would get Disney to sign off on the sample and it would sit there. And so we could go and look and be like, this is what Disney wants, right? Ellen would, would say, I don't like this color. I want it to be green or I've made changes. And then he would go on the sample and make changes on the sample that Disney or Nintendo or very big important people have signed off on. And then we'd have to yell at him. We'd be like, Alan, Alan, you cannot change that. God bless Alan. <laughs> we all loved him, but we were like, please, I don't want to work with him today. I've got too much to do. <laughs> Okay, so let's work on the sphere. Yeah, changing samples reminds me of this story. I was doing a show in San Francisco, and uh, it was like the second or third time I worked there, and there's like one thing there at the time that came up that was in San Francisco. And I remember um, she couldn't paint, and she had an assistant paint. And uh, I came in, and what I was doing is, is a show where we had a big floor with a big, big uh, uh, paint yeah. sample. Like uh, it was like a giant tile. And I made a a four by four version and cut it in quarters and sent one to like line designer, costume director, right? And the painter had one. And I remember coming in going, wow, man, she looks amazing. She matched this really, really good. And I remember the carpenters kind of giggling. I'm thinking, I think it's funny. I think it's kind of weird. So a little while later, the line designer's like, I don't remember that color line looked like that. I'm like, I sent you a big sample of it. He's like, yeah, I know, but I guess I just, I don't know, maybe the lighting is whatever, kind of off. Comes out, what she did was paint a section and cut out like a square of what she could paint. And then was like, oh, that's the sample. Yeah. And later it was revealed. And I was like, I don't wonder why it was a little different. I mean, probably okay, but, you know, it definitely was different. It was different enough that the lighting designer was like, Huh. So, which which you can do that. Give me a sample, and I'll prove it, and then we'll just send it to the other collaborators. But when you have a giant floor, you know, the lighting designer is going to want to see that. Yeah, usually when you do a sample, you always want to do as big of a sample as possible. Yeah. So you can, the lighting designer will love you, because then you can get as an idea of how much time it's going to take, how much, how much it's going to, how much, it, what it's going to look like big. You know, because if you do teeny, teeny little samples, it's like, okay, well, what's it going to look like big? How long is that going to take? Because that took you 15 minutes to do. Now do it 40 feet of that. Okay. Let's make quick. Man, look at that. Isn't it already feel like you can grab it? Defuncated square circle. But yeah, see? See this little bounce shadow down here? How it's doing so much of the work. You know, and Trump Loy is something you do. It, take, it can take a little bit, so it's the white. White, okay. So white is usually, ah! <laughs> it's now break broken. But uh, it comes in and you just really uh, 
how you sell your... And again, you don't want it like the edge. It's got, your light is in the middle. So if you want to create the idea that it's round, it's in the middle.